Hi, everyone. I'm Sybil Wilkes. Welcome to It's Sybil here. And we have a very special show for you today. I'm excited. And I hope that you will take away from this what I have garnered so far uh, and, and even more as we get into the meat of this conversation. And we're talking about uh, sisterhood and caregiving. Uh, that's the primary focus of our of our show today. And um, and this, you know, the sisters are doing it for themselves, uh, an old song. But now it means more than ever, especially as we are an aging uh, group of people as well as luckily we're able to age. But also it is also a it's a it's a theme for for where we are today and talking about caregiving and in some cases we do have to do it for ourselves we have been there for others uh, through all of life's challenges all of life's celebrations and and honorations and and what have you but um this is one where we go through you know our girlfriends with the with the bad boyfriends and they finally make it to the marriage sometimes the marriage doesn't work sometimes it doesn't happen at all um but they're all those heartaches and then of course with child raising and child well child bearing child rearing and uh taking them through their various stages. And then we return to another stage. And as we have gotten through with talking to our children and raising them, then sometimes we are brought back to that same stage as we care for our aging parents. And as we get through all of these stages, we talk about who is caring for us. And that's not that is not a, um, a question that is of, you know, we're not being selfish or anything in, in asking that question. It's a question that has to be asked because as we have done all of these things, as we've gone through all these stages, definitely uh, we need to talk about this and, and put these things in our mind and have these discussions with our friends. And so I have here today a wonderful group of friends, a wonderful group of sisters and talking about this and especially as it relates to a particular uh, area of, of medicine and talking about Alzheimer's and dementia, but definitely talking about the caregiving aspect of our lives. So with that, I want to introduce first our friend, and you, if you have watched us for with any regularity, you know how important this woman is in so many different aspects of our lives. Uh, not only is she a great yoga student, and she has supported our yoga studio, and that's really uh, how we came to know her, and and really uh, just be uh, in her, just glad to be in her space. But also, uh, I've known her for years as uh, as an incredible saleswoman, as an incredible brain in the hair industry, and now. Um, she is bringing a whole new area of life uh, to the forefront, and that is Pat Bailey. How are you, Pat? You know what, Sybil? I am in your space when it comes to yoga. Let's not get it twisted. Okay? No, no. <laughs> no, you just come to our studio. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go. So I'm great today. I'm awesome, and I'm excited about this discussion because we really, truly do have to do it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Real talk. It is real talk. And and so talk a little bit about uh, the whole caregiving at, at, uh, aspect as we continue our conversation. I don't want to leave the, these lovely ladies out, but we are going to start our conversation um, uh, definitely uh, with my, my friend, my my colleague, and uh, we've known each other for a couple of years in the, in the wars of Chicago radio and media, uh, but she is the one and only. Uh, folks in, in Chicago as well as around the world, I dare say, are familiar with the voice and the, the uh, tremendous talent of Jean Sparrow. How are you, Jean? I'm great, Sybil. Thanks for inviting me for this conversation. These things are therapy for me, and I always want to um, help other people not have to go through as hard of a, a journey as we often do when we're caregiving. So thank you for the opportunity. And ladies, it is it's an honor to be here with all of you. Well, let me tell you how honored we are to have a living legend um, if, if you thought you were a living legend in radio, Gene Sparrow, mm -mm. not uh, like this one, not, not like, like this, this one. one, another Chicago homegirl, Marsha yes. Warfield, comedic mm -hmm. legend, actress, and just all around incredible human being. Welcome to you, Marsha Warfield. Thank you so much. I feel like one of those, uh, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just here for, you know, the laugh track. So, uh. <laughs> 
I appreciate you having me. Thank you. No, you are you're more than the laugh track. You are just such an inspiration, and especially as you talk about sisterhood and uh, are are moving together. Uh, that was what struck me when you were on with us earlier with George Wallace, and so um, we are so glad to have you. And let's talk. Let's talk here, ladies, uh, and especially as we talk about why we're here. And, and Pat Bailey, how did we come to this area of caregiving and, and the necessity for it? So one of the things is that makes a that's a very powerful question, because one of the things that always happens with any condition as it relates to health is the numbers. Uh, the numbers put us in this particular place, even though there's people behind the numbers. But we're talking about right now, 53 million people in the United States that are dealing with some facet of caregiving. That's staggering. It's, it's also staggering when you consider that it's actually 16 million dealing with it as it relates to caregiving. Mm. Wow. Predominantly women, mm -hmm. us. And as we start this discussion out, we have to also give the thank you for you guys for bringing this to the forefront again. I mean, Sybil, your show has been so instrumental in getting this word out in the community. But also I'm thinking about the number of veterans who are experiencing caregiving as we speak and it's even more so different for them yeah because they may very have health conditions brought on by the exposure to chemicals and toxins that bring on a form of dementia in their lives this mm. epidemic has us all at a staggering loss within our families within our communities and financially oh mm. my gosh right mm. Mm. yeah you came to this not, uh, and I'm not going to say not willingly, but uh, you were the primary sibling in terms of caregiving for your mom, right? Well, you know what? I don't know if my siblings are listening. So, like, hey, y'all, y'all know y'all did real good, okay? Y'all did real good. Well, you know what? Sometimes I do stir some stuff up there, Pat, you know so I apologize to your, your family if I've said something that I should not have. No, you, that, that's all good. My, my siblings are well aware that we each have a role to play, and it, it does require um, a process of who's on first, and that's okay. That's mm -hmm. really and truly okay. But yes, my mom had Alzheimer's. Uh, she died as a result of Alzheimer's. For us, it was a known journey of seven years. But as anyone who's near this particular disease knows that before you actually see the presence of Alzheimer's, it has been going on probably by as much as 10 to 20 years. So that's kind of scary for folks listening to that right now. Mm -hmm. because they may be checking every sentence they've ever constructed in their mind of what they said verbally, what they lost, what did they put in the refrigerator and said, oops, did I put that in there? Right. I mean, you know, you start thinking about things about what's coming, right? Mm -hmm. the, this and, is and especially if you are witnessing it in, in your family. Yes. And then, and yes. so then it, it kind of comes back to you like, oh my gosh, am I going through what Madeira went through or, you know, exactly. something like that. Right? That's definitely, as a matter of fact, um, the whole issue of cognitive decline as a whole is something that we get a chance to talk about today because we don't know what to look for in the lane of caregiving all the time. If I was to say anything to anybody right now, please know and understand Alzheimer's is not normal. Mm -hmm. It is not normal aging. If you see someone whose behavior and mood and activities have changed, they were once very orderly and now they're not, there is a problem, don't ignore it. If they're right. repeating things, don't ignore it. And I think that's what's happening is that our parents and our loved ones have so much power in our lives. You know, they're the they're the the hub, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just don't want to believe that things are going south and there may be a problem. Then more than likely there is. And recognizing it and doing something about it. Absolutely. That's, those, those steps are are very, yes. uh, very, very much needed. All right. So, um, Pat, I just want you to because we are talking about Alzheimer's and um, mm -hmm. there are just some powerful statistics that, that I do want you to bring yeah. up uh, in terms of how this affects us, because you are a part uh, and a leader in the Black Alzheimer's study. I do want you to give information of, about this disease. So one of the things that became more known, um, as I, I've actually sat on the board for the Alzheimer's Association for four years, um, um, from 2000, 2010 to 2014, but now with the Black Alzheimer's Brain Study, we're talking about 2.2 million African-Americans that are suffering 
in the area of Alzheimer's and related dementia. That's mm. just unconscionable. I mean, particularly when you understand the 6 million known cases of Alzheimer's right now, right? right. The other yeah. aspect about it is that it's older Americans. And I'm really concerned that we're not owning up to the fact that a third of all seniors, I mean, we're talking about people over 65 years and older, unfortunately, they die as a result mm -hmm. of Alzheimer's typically. So those statistics tell us that we need to be having this conversation such as we're having it right now to get our families girded and powered up and informed and prepared and to let women know, oh, no, no, no. You are the primary caregivers. Yeah. And you yeah. can't do it by yourself. So we need to give you some help there. And that's why we're here. So um, just for, for those who are just joining us and, and perhaps, uh, you know, what's, what's going on here? These four beautiful, or well, three beautiful women are here and talking about this. Um, sure, you too. <laughs> yes. let's, talk, let's let's talk about um we are talking about caregiving we're talking about uh dealing with this and and caring not only for those that we love and sometimes just like um but also caregiving for ourselves and caregiving for each other as sisters and so that's our focus today as we as we talk about um just a powerful entity which is the sisterhood that many of us are lucky enough to be a part of i think that's the first thing and then lending that help, lending that assistance to our sisters uh, as they are going through this and, and no, letting them know that they are not just alone. They are not just doing this for themselves. We're all in this together. Um, so let's talk to you and uh, definitely uh, start with you, Marsha Warfield, and talk about um, all of the, the powerful um, words that you give us about caring for each other and women working together. Uh, and as I said, uh, when you were on with George Wallace with us, uh, it's been more than a few weeks ago now, um, but what really struck me, Marcia, is that you just have such a wonderful uh, love and respect for women and, and the power of the sisterhood. Was I wrong? Well, I, I talk about this in my act uh, about how uh, this country uh, specifically uh, needs to be mothered, that we need, we've been fathered long enough and we know what fathers do. They screw mothers. And so uh, <laughs> we, it's about time that we uh, balance the scale. And women have not been um, allowed power have mm -hmm. not, uh, men have a God. Women don't have a goddess. And we do, mm. we are the goddess. And when you think about what a God is, a God is a creator. And women bring life from spirit to flesh mm. and then nurture that life until they return back to spirit. Mm. And so it's a lifelong uh, thing, but in the, in the middle of it, when we don't uh, have and, and acknowledge that higher goddess, we forget to be nice to each other. Mm. We forget to mm. encourage each other. We forget to remind each other. I was, uh, I'm on uh, social media a lot. And Brittany Cooper was saying that this, you know, politics is exhausting Oof. and tired. Mm -hmm. And I, yes, but you are stronger than your fatigue, you are stronger than the white supremacy. So treat yourself like you would anybody else who came to you and said, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Give him a bath, have a nice meal, watch, binge watch something on TV, stretch out, have a drink, indulge yourself and support yourself. Understand that you have the strength, you have the reserve and you have the power above you and within you to connect to that inner goddess. Mm. And then you can understand that you will always be that nurturer and you will, you will uh, not fulfill yourself. You will mm -hmm. feel avoid if you don't step into that role, you will feel like, okay, you will, you know, it'll eat at you. You have, mm -hmm. to, because that's, the resources we have, that's right. who we are. So if we can remind each other to be nice to each other, to yeah. support each other, to do all the things that a patriarchal system 
takes away from us. Mm -hmm. Loving, giving support and give that back and start to mother each other and sister each other and just be nice. It'll help with all these natural transitions that we're all going to go through. Yeah, that's so important. Um, Pat, do you want to add anything to that? I'm, I, I want to uh, go to Jean, uh, and it, unless you have something to add to it. Only, only that I'm just loving on my inner goddess right now. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, Pat, that has never been difficult to believe about you. I just, you I just, <laughs> um, Jean Sparrow, you come at this um, a lot like I do uh, as an only child. And um, as but you your experiences are different in that you have gone through um, the caregiving part of it for an extended period of time, as well as life after and, and talking about those who support you. Yeah, um, I lost my father to COVID uh, in May of 2020 after caring for him for four years. He was diagnosed with frontal temporal lobe dementia in uh, the spring of 2016. And I remember mm. that because it changed my life. Sure. Um, I knew, I knew for probably about two years before that, that something was off to Pat's earlier point. Um, and I would say stuff and my family was like, oh no, he's fine, he's fine. And when we finally got him diagnosed, the neurologist said, you know, the reason why you noticed it is because you talk to him on the phone mostly because you live a thousand miles away. Mm -hmm. Your family who sees him in person, because my dad was such an amazing storyteller and communicator mm -hmm. that he was able to compensate for it by the way he physically presented what he was talking about. He filled in the gaps and adapted, not that he was trying to hide it or anything like that. He may not have even been fully aware of it. And, you know, I think about that and I think about how, you know, my family is unusually close. I mm -hmm. have learned, like in a healthy way, I think. But, <laughs> you but don't have like, any uncle cousins or anything like no, that. No, 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 not like that. <laughs> okay, but like okay, we're, okay. we're like unusually involved in each other's lives. Like literally my first cousins are like my siblings. Right. right. And it's 18 of us on just that side. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, and it's a wealth of support. And I could not have done it without my cousins. Um, one of my cousins was my dad's one of my dad's god children. And he was mm -hmm. she was particularly close to him. But she had also cared for her mother who had early onset Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Sophia Sparrow, because I mean, oh. she held me down gave me the information. You want to talk about Marsha's mothering and sistering through a thing? Mm -hmm. It was like, girl, you can do it. Look, this is what's going to happen. And this is, well, maybe we need to th think about this. And I got you on that. And so it's like, when you have a coven of, mm -hmm. of, of, <laughs> of real women. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the magic. That, of that kind of broad in your life mm -hmm. and, my, and my other cousins too, you know, it's like, and my aunts who were always checking in, my aunt called me today because it's, oh, and by the way, happy Veterans Day. My father was a veteran, U.S. Mm -hmm. Air Force. And I wonder about that too, Pat, you know, what, and he worked in a chemical plant. Mm -hmm. And I remember there were times when my dad would, would say, he was like, you know, I got hit here. He was like, and then, you know, that time when I got burned with the stuff. And I was like, even when his brain wasn't quite putting stuff together, he was like, something, something happened to me mm -hmm. to cause this. And, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, I think that, um, that the thing that really appealed to me about what you were talking about when, it, when you first came to me and asked me to be a part of this, invited me so generously, that if it were not for my sisters, my friends in Chicago mm. my, and across the country, my family at home in Louisiana and across the country. But my aunt even called me today. My eldest aunt was like, well, baby, I know Veterans Day is not your best day. It's not mine either. Here's a Bible verse. <laughs> and, right. you know, ain't they Dale coming through, right? At, <laughs> okay. at, at almost 90, you know, she coming through with it. And that kind of support is what kept me from cracking because mm, wow. this whole thing changed me. Mm. I am a different human being than I was. I'm still Jean, 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm a different human being and I move different because of that. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing because I think I've changed for the better, mm -hmm. but it was not easy. It was a yeah. hard, yeah. hard transition. Yeah. So let me ask you this, because you and I, if I'm not mistaken, Jean, you and I lost our mothers right about the same time. I lost um, my mom in 97. Okay. And so, um, and I was a little bit before that, but um, just in those, in, in those, uh, what, what we're talking 40 years now, <laughs> 30 years, uh, 30 years for sure. Um, this is definitely um, different for you in the loss because was there that caregiving part for you with your mother? No, my mother died pretty suddenly. She mm -hmm. um, had had to go in. She was only 64, 63, something like that. She had, she was, the picture of health had mm -hmm. a single bypass, went into the hospital, went through it fine, came home and a blood clot loosened mm -hmm. and caused a stroke. And, um, and she died pretty suddenly. Like I had gone home for her surgery. I had left because she was doing great. Um, and during the recovery, it was, I mean, it was like this and having mm -hmm. gone through it twice, losing a parent, especially as an only, and I know you know that like our paths are so creepily similar. Mm -hmm. that it's, mm -hmm. It like blows my mind. But what I will say is, and I've taught one of my girlfriends lost her mother um, maybe a year before my dad died. And she, she had lost her father around the same time that I lost my mom. And we talked mm. about the difference between the two. And right. I'll say what it is. Losing my mother in my 20s was a different kind of loss suddenly. Yeah. Losing my father after knowing him as an adult and then caring for him for four years and getting to know him as a child almost. Yeah, yeah. Because, he, because dementia will sometimes revert them back to who they were. And I got right. to see some of who Alan Sparrow was as a little mm -hmm. boy. Mm -hmm. And seeing that and knowing what I'm losing at 50, because I had just turned 50 when, right before COVID hit and my dad died. Mm -hmm. And um, I know what I lost. I had the responsibility and the honor of walking him to his transition. Mm -hmm. that's and beautiful. that's a whole different kind of loss. And let yeah. me tell you, I, I can't say one is better or other. Yeah, you know yeah. You, that's, it, that's, that's a ridiculous. Yeah, it's that's... it. But I will say that. I am glad that I had the honor to see my daddy home mm -hmm. because I know that I am my, with my family's help, did a good job. We yeah. did what God wanted us to do and it was peaceful and it was not what I would have chosen, of course. but that's how God had it. And my mm -hmm. family helped me to see that. Yeah. Um, that's powerful. Oof. That's yeah. powerful. Um, let's talk about some statistics of this, Miss Pat, because uh, and I call her Miss Pat because that's what that's what that's what they do down here in the South. Um, but uh, let's talk about uh, some of the uh, caregiving statistics because if I'm not mistaken, you have one in three caregivers, about 33, 30 30 yes. percent, is age sixty five or older, and they're women, and they're women. Uh, Two thirds yep. of the caregivers are women. You know, there's another statistic that hit my desk today, which was particularly um, difficult for me to embrace um, my mind around. And that is when you look at the women who are at the age of 45, you've got about 45 percent actually in the gauging and unpaid care. Now, I'm mm -hmm. trying to address. Yeah. See, I'm with you on that, Jean. I um, as you raise your hand on that subject. I was a caregiver for my dad at 21 who died suddenly versus I was a caregiver for my mom when, when it was over a seven year time period. That whole subject matter of financial consideration, seriously, we've got caregivers actually giving up as much of anywhere from 20 to 40 percent of their income to care for their loved one. And, and Sybil, you and I have talked about this before. 
And that for us, um, for my mom, it was about $3,300 a month for two and a half years yeah. because I'm that sales executive that you spoke to and marketing executive. I'm on the road trying to care for her. I'm down here in Texas and having brought her here with me. And then I figure out, wait a minute, you don't know what you're doing. I mean, you can't, you, <laughs> right, you know, you can't do Which this Which is by a powerful yourself. admission unto <laughs> itself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, isn't that the truth, right? The, the way in which, Gene, the way you've defined it, where now I've got a whole extended vocabulary of uh, goddess and then coven, the girl coven, okay? <laughs> Seriously, okay? <laughs> And we're going to put that positive spin on coming and, and now. Absolutely. Just... <laughs> absolutely. We are. Absolutely. But let's, let's make it real. You cannot do this by yourself. And then one of the things that I share with people is a diagnosis of Alzheimer's and dementia is a diagnosis of caregiving for the family. And now when I say family, I don't have to just look at it from the land land of uh, it's my siblings, it's my blood. But it is my cousins. It is my mm -hmm. friends. It is who can I call on? Because right now, as everyone's listening to this, understand that you are going to be a caregiver or be cared for. That's just real talk. So what's the plan? And we and, and so you've got to have the, the positive spin on the coven mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of people around you. And, and, and Jean, I love the aspect that you had it phased out where in the end of it, you even had the encouragers because when mom died and I am still that executive type, what's next? This was seven years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have become another mother of where I have the one son. I was that person in my mindset, in my spirit, in my body. This was my job. Who am I now? It changed me forever. It changed Pat, Pat preach because the biggest transition I had, and I was glad that I had COVID to do it and quarantine mm. to do it. I had to figure out who the hell I was because my identity was wrapped around caring for my father. Mm -hmm. um, and it complete every decision I made. Yes. For for many years, because I did help my dad out when my mom died, because my mom, you know, managed the whole household. My dad didn't. I mean, I'm sure he did something. Um, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like my mama ran the household. And so when she died, there were things I had to figure out to help him along without, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. inserting myself too much in his business, mm -hmm. which is a whole <laughs> different kind of tightrope. But once he got sick and once he really needed to you know, needed my help, every single decision I made revolved around my two people, my dad and my dog, because my dog got sick in the middle. I know that's, I know that's, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a country yeah. music song. It, girl, <laughs> listen, let me tell you something. COVID took, COVID took a dude, my daddy and my dog. Yeah. I'm going to tell y'all right now. I'm going to tell y'all right now. It was, it, it, listen, but, but this is the thing. This, there are two things that I learned is that that a lot of times the things that come into your life are there to teach you a lesson. I That's never right. used to ask for help. I learned that I had to ask for help. And yeah. it and sometimes, who we it pained me. It pained me. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know how to fix my mouth to ask for help. Because my but my family would just offer and then I learned how to say because sometimes you don't know what to do. And then right. they'll go, what do you need? Be like, hell I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no, stop. I I miss <laughs> and um and so that was that thing so some of this stuff was the journey i had to go through and then i understand why so many women get lost in relationships and their and 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 in their kids lives because when you are a caregiver your whole life revolves around caring for somebody else's needs and mm -hmm. you forget about yours and if it wasn't for my cousins and my friends encouraging me to take care of myself it would have been even harder. Yeah. But you know, you know what's powerful about that? Um, having that similar co-journey and then saying, well, <laughs> you know, you've never been one to be without a plan in your life. So you need right. to pick yourself up. And I literally went on a journey. I literally went and had my conversation in the area of self-care with God about 
who was I? And I had been a helper my entire life. I am the go-to. You need a party on the fly and you got a 24-hour notice, I promise you, I got you. I was that person that people yeah. could depend on. Build a brand, build a business. And it is so hard. It was so hard for me to address my needs. And I remember showing up. I'll never forget this. Mom comes down and I had been with the attorneys. I bring down all the paperwork. Guys, I pull up into the little condo. I got mommy for the first time. All the paperwork, the luggage, everything was in the trunk of the car. The car got broken into. Jesus. Wow. I show, up, hey, I show up the next day and I'm crying and my family is in absolute shock. She's crying. What's, mm. what's going on? She's Self-care is the number one priority in this lane of caregiving. Let me ask you this, Marsha, from, from your perspective, uh, because I know it is for me uh, in terms of when you see people who you think need your help, how do you um, insert yourself into this? Um, because sometimes it's difficult. Like, like Jean said, you know, accepting help uh, yeah. is, is, is a big thing for some of us. Well, sometimes you just have to step in and do it. You know, it's like um, uh, if somebody, you know, is uh, going through something, you know, sometimes you just have to show up at the house and, and clean up, you know, and just say, sit down and let me bring you something to eat. But mm -hmm. a couple of things, you know, cancer is a long illness, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes. my mother and my aunt, who were both uh, very important in my life, passed away within two months of each other. And I was at the height of my career. And I had to figure out how to work and uh, so that we could afford the things that I knew they needed and then have, uh, have the, the, the wherewithal to take care of them. So my sister uh, took care of my mother and my aunt stayed with me. And, um, and when my mother passed away, she passed away last. Uh, and she was only 55 years old, 56 mm -hmm. years old. And when she passed away, I had this overwhelming sense of I wanted to call mama to tell her my mother had died. Mm. Mm. And I kept that kept coming into the I didn't have anybody to call uh, to share that with. And that was uh, uh, the part of the loss that was uh, most striking in the immediate thing. In the aftermath, I crashed. I totally crashed. I did not know what to do with myself. I ended up taking 15 years off mm -hmm. and coming back. So there can be, uh, because this is your life, you know. Right. Uh, when I started, when I was doing the show business and I'd get a challenge, I'm on the Richard Pryor show, what the heck do I do? I call my mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I get it. Yeah, I call my mother. She's yeah. there all the time. Now, what do I do? And so I had to find that out. And, and the only way I did was to crash out. I wouldn't recommend that. No, <laughs> but I mean, that, that is what it but is. But the reality is that your whole sense of identity does, uh, uh, you just don't have it. It's, it's dark. And, and your mother, especially, like I said, mothers are the ones who bring us from spirit to flesh. And then we have to usher them back to spirit. Wow. And um, once let me, we realize let me, that, that kind of makes that a little easier, but we don't always know that in the moment. Yeah. Let me um, go to, we have a lot of people who are standing by and, and, and who want to um, make some comments uh, as to the discussion right now. And um, so here we have Sonia on Facebook said, I'm an only cared for both mom and dad, no help from my cousins. Uh, North Texas Alzheimer's came in and filled the void. They were both Alzheimer's dementia patients and died three years apart. I've been seeking after giving resources. That's so talk to that, Miss Pat, if you can. So look, life is a journey, we know this. If you're being so moved and having care for your parents where now you want to give back, there are various support groups that are available to you in the Metroplex. And I believe Sonia, in that she indicated, I believe I saw Texas. Actually, I believe I know Sonia. How you doing, girl? 
you want you want to be a part of the of the support groups. And I am not a I'm not afraid to say that when you look at an organization here locally, our relationship with the local Alzheimer's Association and support groups, they would love to hear you tell your story. Right. See, one of the things that 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 we can think about about how we are as people, we have always been the people of telling the stories in the family. The family needs to get bigger in this lane of Alzheimer's and dementia. You want to go share what transpired with you, you because you want to be the encourager that helps people understand that you can get through this. I promise you. I promise you God has got you. It's going to be an honorable journey for you. I can back it up with scripture with Ephesians 6 and 2. Become part of the support groups in your immediate area at alz.org. There's people who can make that happen. And if people even see me on Facebook as Patricia Bailey, right? You can you can DM me. I will send you where you need to go. Because and giving if, back, and if you're an important. available man, be sure to DM her. I'm just oh, saying. you know just, what? Just, hey, just, just slide on no, in, slide no, no, no. in them DMs. No. Hey, I, hey. Oh, you know what? This you know what? Ms. Pat, I, I, that's a, <laughs> we got we have we have another comment here. All I just right, want to we have somebody else. <laughs> Uh, Kimberly Jackson said, caregiving has brought out all of my emotions. I'm learning more about myself as I care for my mom. Sis. That's. Sis. Yes. That's big yes. facts. Big, big facts. Fact. Big facts. There ain't oh, no bigger facts than that. Gee, what did I learn about myself? I learned that finally where my vulnerabilities were. Mm -hmm. I, um. Period. Let me, let me, because I do want to talk about that, but we do need to talk about where do we go from here? Let's talk, let's talk action. Let's talk, uh, you know, in terms of how we, we move from one segment to another and you all can share this uh, with us, how to ask for help, uh, how to, and where can we go? So let's talk about wh where can we go for some help, Pat? And, uh, and, for you, Jean, let's talk about how to ask for that help. And, and you can go back and, and talk a little bit more about that. So, Ms. Pat, tell me. All right. So there's a couple places I want people to do. Number one, and I want them to have their sheet of paper ready. You want to actually have a plan that deals with what Jean spoke to, which is a hub. And in that instance, to know what you need, go on BlackALZBrainStudy.com. BlackALZBrainStudy.com. There is a section called helpful resources. In helpful resources, you're going to see information about being a long distance caregiver. It's going to give you information about how to communicate with your doctor. That is so important. Most families don't know their parent or loved one has Alzheimer's and dementia, and you want to ask for a neurologist examination. You don't want them to figure it out. You want to be able to say doctor's orders. I need a referral. You want to understand memory loss and memory gaps. All that information is available at blackalzbrainstudy.com. It's more than a study. It's actual portal that provides caregiver support and help as well. So that's the first step um, yes. in talking about Black ALZ and, and um, the contact information. Um, what about asking for help? Because I'm... I, I, I found myself, even with the short period of time where uh, the cancer had returned for my mom and and her subsequent death, um, I, as the only, I felt in, she brought me in and I was going to help her out, you know, just like you said, Jean. And and I was the only one that could do it. I was the only one, um, despite, you know, her best friends and, you know, all of that uh, and some really good girlfriends. But um just asking for help and, and releasing that, that guard that you have there. Uh, how did you do it? Marsha, like, like, Marsha, what, what you got to say, girl? I'm, I'm I just want to the say legend. one thing. You ain't going to be ready. No matter how much you prepare, you are right. not going to be ready. You right. don't know what the journey right. is. And so understand that. But in that understanding, know that you can. The part that's the hardest is when you don't, know what it is you don't know and you don't know what to right. do. But right. once you just take that moment and say, I, I can do this. It's hard, but I got to and I can. And once you believe that, it makes things just a tad bit easier and every way you can make it easier is good. 
but mm -hmm. you're not going to be prepared. You're going to mess up. You're going to, you know, things are going to happen. You're going to see your parents in a way, you know, you're going to see them fight and you're going to see them give up. And you're mm -hmm. just going to see a lot of different things that you don't know about, but it's a right. journey you can complete. You're going to get to the other side and it's going to be one day okay. Mm -hmm. But about grief, I just want to say, I found out with grief, what we do, we tend to avoid grief and we tend to try to put it off and we, we, we're stronger than grief. Sure. You know what? Give into it. Give in to that feeling, follow mm -hmm. in it, take yes. the day, two days, yes. whatever, yes. get drunk, yes. cry, all yes. the yes. God, yes. whatever you have to do, get it out. Mm -hmm. you once you get it out Marcia. and get sick of yourself, mm -hmm. which is when you will get sick of yourself, you can take that breath and say, here's what's left. Here's what I have to do. And even if you do put it off, you're still going to have to have that day, that week, that month of reckoning with your yeah, own and, 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 and here's 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 yeah. life though, right, Marsha? Because it may not be when you're ready. <laughs> you know, you may be keep putting it off, but it's going to happen to you with okay. or without your permission. It's right. going to happen, right? So give yourself permission to grieve. Why y'all yeah. love all up in my head, my business, my heart? Why? 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 Well, Why? Open, up, so, open up your head, your heart, and tell us, Jean. Crack uh, it open. Talk, okay. talk, so, about, <laughs> talk about that in terms of, you know, stealing yourself to ask for help. So for me, the easier lesson of the process was asking for help. The hardest thing was receiving it. Mm-hmm was letting somebody take difference. care of me or take care of my dad, releasing the control, releasing the, the need to be at everything. Because like I was, my mama used to have this thing. She said, you know, baby, you can't, you can't get any more blessings if you're trying to hold on to them so hard with Woo. both your hands. You yep. got to at least open one hand. You're better off if you're open too but at least open one. And my problem was with my father is that I was holding on to him. I wanted him to stay. Mm -hmm. And cause that's my last parent, you know, he was with me for the, you know, he went through the grief of my mom with me and all of this. And um, I didn't realize it until it was the end. And, and one of my girlfriends said this about when she lost her mother, you know, you know how it goes. It, things start to snowball toward the end. It's like one thing happens and something else gets, gets worse and you fix one thing or you treat one thing and you get one symptom under control. Another one goes. And she said, it was like, it was slipping through my fingers. And I was like, mm -hmm. that's what happens with death. And I could yeah. see it with her. And I could not see it with me, but having good friends, mm -hmm. they, they hold up a mirror and say, baby girl, it's time for you to see this. And right. it's time for you to realize that if it's time, there is no amount of holding on you can do when God is ready for that person to go, it's time. Mm -hmm. And you got to get yourself ready and look at yourself in, in the mirror. And to Marsha's earlier point about help and things like that, um, my mama also used to say, a good friend will ask you what you need. Mm -hmm. Your best friends will just show up and do something because they ain't got time to ask you. And, and the thing is, is there is no judgment on any of those levels of friendship because all of those things are necessary. There's only a few people I will let bust up into my house and clean mm -hmm. up or cook for me or whatever. But many of them, many people will not do it, especially when it seems like you got your shit together. Oh, I'm sorry. Were we, uh, are no. we being good today? Were we being We're good girlfriends. Today? We're good. Okay. So <laughs> when you when you trying so hard to keep everything together, to, to hold it together and put that out there and, you know, for work and all the, you know how it is. So well, you on the air, people looking at you and I was on TV then. So yeah. Like, television is a whole different animal. Baby. I mean, <laughs> it's just, it is, you, you ain't never going to be ready. And even right. when it's over, you go look back and go, what the just what the fuck just happened, happened? yeah <laughs> what just yeah. happened but i yeah. will say this my work 
prepared me to be an excellent advocate for my daddy. Because when I walked in, I had a list of questions. People asked me if I was a healthcare professional more than once. I was like, nope, but I know how to do research. And it used to tickle my daddy until the very end. I would, they would be like, are you a medical professional? Nope, I'm a reporter. And, it, and, <laughs> and, and ask the, those questions. And, the, and it's like the air in the room would go... <laughs> And my daddy would start laughing. I was like, Daddy, that's my girl. (laughs) COVID. We got to talk about COVID now. COVID is keeping people from being that advocate. Yes. Yes, You can't always have that access that that people once had. And so dealing with that, where you can't, you physically can't be in the room. How do you adjust? And that's one of the tragedies of COVID that nobody was talking about, that you you they have to isolate and you can't always be there right. to advocate for them, to care for them, to bring them home. So what happened for me, because what happened in my situation was particularly tragic because my dad's decline happened around Christmas of 2019 is when I realized he was going to need to go into a more secure facility. He was in an independent senior living place that didn't have a transitional space. That's one of the things that happens when you're in small communities. Every amenity that's available to you in a larger metropolitan area are not necessarily available in in small towns, but sometimes you get better care because people know each other. And, you know, if your cousin is working at the nursing home, you know, oh, wait, you know, but what happened, I I had to admit my father to a nursing home because he started wandering. And Mm -hmm. even though he always got where he was going, he wasn't able to, his, his, one of his effects was he wasn't able to speak and communicate with people. So it was as bad as if he was wandering and not knowing where he was going. And so I admitted him to a nursing home, the same one my grandmother was in, by the way, Mm. right behind my aunt's house. Um, In on Super Bowl Sunday was when I left. And I was supposed to go back right around St. Patrick's Day to take my dad to his next specialist appointment. And that's when they went on quarantine. So Mm. that was the last time I saw my father. Now, what I will say is, because the nursing home knew, because I established myself within a in the lead up and on those days, mm-hmm. I was included in everything. You know, they quickly got iPads for everybody to be able to take into the rooms. They quickly got a process to where if they were in the doctors, you know, or or with the nurses, they would call and they would check in. They would give updates. And when he went to the hospital with COVID. Um, the doctors were there and I was there virtually and I was there with him when he took his last breath. Hmm. I realized though that everybody isn't able to do that because right. everybody ain't, ain't, ain't got my mouth. And, <laughs> and, and, and I, you know, and I was a guard dog for my daddy. I wish yeah. some, I wish a motherfucker would. Okay. Okay. On um, those words. <laughs> good word. Good word. And, and I'm not sure if you're going to have a grave site, but I think that would be a great thing to go right there on the tombstone. Um, we are, uh, we have uh, quickly run out of time and I do, there's a couple of things I want you to do. Miss Pat is first of all, um, to give us a, another, uh, another description of what you're doing and how people can reach out to you. So, the Black Alzheimer's Brain Study was created to help us understand what in the world is going on with this thing called Alzheimer's and dementia. Why is it impacting Black African Americans more than it's impacting anyone? Why is it impacting women? We don't know why. We don't know if it's sleep disorder. We don't know if it's depression. We don't know if it's discrimination. Come on now. We don't know if it's societal. And in doing this, the, the opportunity was not just to understand about the Black Alzheimer's Brain Study for people to get into the trials here locally, though, locally here in the Dallas market. is a no-drug study, is experts, et cetera, et cetera. But it was to run a parallel path on caregiving with a discussion just like today, mm-hmm. as everybody has poured out today. Because what I've heard, Sybil, that's been powerful in the, in the combined stories is There are some things you can be prepared for, and there's some things you just are not going to know what to do, except you're going to have to breathe through it. But if there's going to be a sisterhood and a hub, it's going to be all about what Jean described, which technically meant there were power of attorneys, there was wills, there was an understanding of trust, 
There was an understanding of DNRs, do not resuscitate. There was a process. But the other thing that was powerful about what you guys have shared is there was a way in knowing that you needed to go with people around you. There's help there when you ask for help. I had to learn to finally break down and say, Father God, where is my help going to come? Even outside my siblings, because we now were in different cities. Mm -hmm. So it's the hub, it's the process, it's the long-term care insurance. So under the area of self-care. And so how can people reach you? How can they get, how can they get to you with this well, information? The good, the good thing about the black ALZ site, when you click on it, it asks you to put in your information and it'll immediately send us an email when you populate your email address and we will respond to any questions that you have. We have people prepared online right now in which to make that happen over the next 24 hour period. That's, that's awesome. important. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's that awesome. Is amazing. Um, Jean, you've left us with some powerful words. Um, some <laughs> that we can't use in church, but I'm so um, sorry, y'all. No, <laughs> no, but no, you no, know no. my heart. God I know. working on me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm Jesus, like, she up, just, Jesus is there. Yes. No, that's that's right. that's that's right. Right. Yes. Yes. You know, she, uh, Jesus's mantra is "fuck around and find out." So uh, <laughs> I'm right there with you. Me, I look. It, it was. I was feeling that spirit. It was coming toward me. Um, and, and let me let me tell let me tell you a little bit about where you can find the woman who gave us Jesus, uh, Marsha Warfield, the one and only, the legend, Marsha yeah. Warfield, going to be on uh, VH1 Miracles in 125th Street or on Miracles, Miracles across on. the 125th Street. Nick Cannon's Christmas movie will be uh, debuting December 20th. Awesome. On VH1. Oh, miracle. Oh, across 125th Street. Also, wait. you're going to be on Fox that. on uh, 911. 911. That should air uh, about the 29th of November. Okay. And, and then, then Showtime. Uh, Tell us about Showtime. Uh, that's uh, even more funny women of a certain age. It's the comedy of those of us who've uh, whose boobs point at the floor. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's the third or fourth in the series, and uh, we it, it's going to be very funny. You all have been so wonderful. Thank you so much. I hope that you'll come back again. I love this. I love the conversation. I love the sisterhood, and I just uh, so appreciate you all. And Miss Pat, we could not have done this without you. So, uh, and we appreciate all the good work that you wow. do. Uh, and, and people, uh, we have the Black ALZ study information for people to get. Uh, and talking about caregiving, people can reach you at uh, J. Is that J. Sparrow? J at JM Sparrow. And I also James. wanted to give a plug for the Alzheimer's Association in the Chicago area. Um, there are a lot of outreach programs for in within the black community in Chicago through uh, ALZ.org. And they also have a helpline number uh, that is on the site at ALZ.org. And when you click through to, to, to it, the 800 number is there with the resources and they will connect you with things that are local to Chicago if you need them. Because I, I saw a couple of people say that they were here in Chicago. I know mm -hmm. um, that that's a thing, not to take away from anything else, but sometimes you need somebody physically right there. Right. And I do a lot of work with yeah. Alzheimer's Association of Illinois and um, am proud to do so because that's another part of the healing is helping somebody yes. else heal, right? Absolutely. Right, Ms. Absolutely. Pat? That's, that's what you do, give back Absolutely. immediately. Yes. And yes. Marsha, how can people reach you? How can, how can we follow you? I'm on social media, marshallwarfield.whatever, whatever platform. <laughs> and you can find me on there, my website, marshallwarfield.com. And, uh, and I, I'm probably the easiest person to find online that, that there is. And, and you probably are not the first woman to say that. Uh, <laughs> um, Pat Bailey, uh, we're going to give you the last word, but I do want to leave you with this. This is something that we uh, have every day. So um, if everybody who is watching and those of you who are here, just take a breath, just, you know, close your eyes and nobody will steal your stuff. You're good where you are. Just breathe. And as we close this out, caregiver burnout is real. Do everyone a favor and take a respite. Take time for yourselves, ladies. Miss Pat, you have the final word. I don't know if it get, can get any better than that. I promise you that self-care piece, breathing through it. If I were to do anything differently, I would say be prepared to deal with emotions. 
and to grow as a better child of God. I learned forgiveness. I learned giving like I've never known giving before. Everybody breathed through it. That was perfect. And so on that note, I love you guys for doing this journey with me. Thank you so much. And thank you all alone. for being a part of this. And that is so, let, let, let me have you repeat that one more time. You're not alone. Not alone anymore. Not alone. Thank you so much, Marsha. It's been great. I absolutely adore you and, and have been such a fan for, for a minute. Um, but I, but I do treat yourself it. like you would any of your other friends that you love. Take a time and treat yourself sometimes like you are your best friend. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Thank you all so much, Jean. Thank you so much. I hope that you're still in your homeland or my homeland. I am my, I'm in our homeland, the okay. home of our people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Pat Bailey, thank you all. Everyone, thanks for participating. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Go out there and be good to each other. Aloha.